So as you guys requested, we are diving into the red teaming learning path. We're really excited to embark on this new series on the channel along with you guys. We're going to be starting off with the red team fundamentals. Now, we already covered this red team fundamentals room here. So feel free to, uh, to look through my channel. You can watch that video where we walk through that. So we're going to be doing the red team engagements within the red team fundamentals section. So hopefully that's not too confusing for you guys. Now, I will say... Most people will click off this video, okay? To be honest with you, if you are staying and watching this, then you're really already, you're separating yourself from the masses of people that are going to look at this video and say, oh, it's not the cool, flashy, the sexiness part of pen testing or part of red teaming. Therefore, I'm just going to click off this video and, and watch something that makes me feel good, right? So you can really get so far ahead of those people, right? Because if you're willing to learn the fundamentals, which most people are not willing to do, or they just try to, to skim through it, and then they end up having all these issues down the line. So understanding these fundamentals are crucial. They're really important. That's why they're called the fundamentals. They're the building blocks of this stuff. So as much as you'd be tempted just to watch this stuff on uh, weaponization and phishing and password attacks and, you know, AV evasion, all this sexy stuff... Remember that the fundamentals is what it all comes down to. And if you have a weak foundation, you will be a weak pen tester, a weak red teamer. So if you're sticking around, just know that you are in that minority there. So with that being said, let's get into it. And also, you will be in the minority if you stick it out long enough to get to the point where you're able to apply for jobs and get in those interviews, you know, for, for another thing, right? So if you are embarking on this journey and you're serious about it, you're definitely going to want to arm yourself with the top 10 pen testing interview questions that you need to know to ace those interviews. You can check that out right down in the description below. But yeah, like I said, let's just get into this red team engagements room here. So I've, as you see, I've done this room before because I don't want to walk through and read everything off just like a boring professor would read off the slides. So we're, we're going to, to have a discussion about this, right? And we're going to cover the key terms here. So a huge misconception a lot of people have about red teaming is they think that it's just stuff like um, phishing and, you know, password cracking and using responder and cobalt strike and all this stuff, which, yeah, that's a big part of it, but there's so much that goes into a red team engagement before the engagement even starts. And that is what this room is all about. You know, there's stuff like tabletop exercises, adversary emulation, and physical assessments and stuff. But there's a lot of documentation and important stuff that goes in before that engagement even starts. So the first thing is defining the scope and objectives. So really, it depends on the organizations. What are their goals and the client, right? They're going to you know, have certain things that they want you to test and other things that will be considered out of scope. So maybe certain subnets, things like that, they don't want you messing around with. A lot of times they'll say, you know, we don't want you to bring down any services, right? So stuff like this, system downtime is not permitted under any circumstances, but it really depends on the client, what they're looking for. Now, depending on the organization and what kind of threat actors target their industry, let's just say, they may decide that they want you to emulate a particular APT, a, per, a particular advanced persistent uh, threat actor. Like, for example, this one here, APT38. If we click in here, we can see that um, this one is based out of North Korea, uh, motivated um, to, what are they doing? Financial institutions is what they're going after and they've attempted to steal more than $1.1 billion. So they may have you try and emulate a specific threat actor, and there's all these different sites where you can see like what their tooling is, what their common techniques are, and you could try to emulate that very closely, but it really depends. Not all red team engagements are like that, but yeah, the scoping is really important. So they might say no data exfiltration, uh, don't mess with the production servers, this uh, network range is in scope, this one is out of scope, things like that. That will be included in um, the scoping and objectives. But now, you know, here they even provide some uh, some examples of what this might look like, right, in the actual documentation itself. Now, the rules of engagement is actually the formal document that is, you know, the le legally binding outline of the client objectives and scope that we defined earlier. This is like the legal version of that. So we take a look in here. They provided a sample one here that you can see just to give you an idea of what this would look like. 
which is really nice because this is the kind of stuff that you would be seeing actually on the job in the real world. And they outline, you know, the different sections in here. Now, I will say with all these documents that we're going to cover in this video, it's very let's say, open to the interpretation of the company. There is no one, this is the document that all organizations follow, this structure, this template, or whatever. Depending on your company, they may have slightly different section names and slightly different ways of laying this stuff out. You know, they might have different rules and things like that. So it is very um, up for interpretation, let's just say. But what they provide here in this room is an example of, you know, what you might see out there in the real world. So the next part is the campaign planning. And here are some of the things that you might see in that kind of document. All right. So each internal red team will have its own methodology and documentation for planning, just like everything. You'll see that as a common theme. They keep saying, they keep stating that. So here is a sample one here. You might have something like the engagement plan, overarching description of the technical requirements for the team. And we'll, they're going to dive into this in a little bit. Uh, con ops, resource, plan, uh, and personnel requirements, timelines, all that stuff. And this is really interesting that I, I found. The mission plan. Now, in my experience as a red teamer, I've never had a explicit, super detailed mission plan to say these are the exact commands that you need to run and stuff like that. I'm really curious down in the comment section, for those of you guys that have done some red teaming, have you ever had this experience? Uh, one thing they do mention is that oh, this is more common for very large red teams that have a wide range of skill sets on their, you know, like from advanced to very beginner on their red team, right? A lot of times these organizations or these companies, they might have a mission plan on their red team to say, hey, we want you to run these exact commands you know, or even down to what time they want you to run it at. Now, one thing I will say as a red teamer in general is that it's a very good idea to somehow log the time that you run each command that you run because sometimes, you know, you might get, you know, the blue team saying, hey, we noticed this um, anomaly on our network, this thing we didn't expect to see, and we noticed it came through at this time. Was this you or was this, you know, possibly a third-party threat actor, right? So how would you know that if you're not logging your time? You'll just have to go off of memory, which is not good. So what you can do is you can, for example, you could set up your terminal to show the time that each command is run. Uh, that's one way to do it. There's a few different ways to do it, but it's a good idea to really keep close track of the time that you run things on. Just a little aside I wanted to mention to you guys, a little, little tip. Uh, remediation plan defines how the engagement will proceed after the campaign is finished. So all this stuff will be included in the campaign building, right? Trying to build out your campaign. And then the engagement documentation. This is a very high-level document that is mostly for, like, non-technical people. Um, you see here, ConOps is concept of operations, non-technically written overview of how the red team meets client objectives and the, you know, target client. So, pretty straightforward here. There's, um, that is um, that part, right? But this also includes, like, the operations plan, which is more on the side of... Um, what happens that would stop the engagement? Like if the environment goes down, would we stop um, the red team engagements at that point? Um, you know, these different scenarios, you want to really just, it's really just covering them from a legal standpoint and all this stuff. Like what would you want us to do in this situation, in that situation, that kind of stuff. So yeah, there's a lot that goes into the red teaming stuff beyond just the, the cool flashy hacking part. Uh, and then any of the technical requirements here, the red team may need. And the mission plan, this is a document that is only for the red team, exclusively for the red team themselves, where they have command playbooks, execution times, responsibility and roles. So this is very free form. I haven't really had a strict mission plan in any of the red teams I was in. That's why I'm saying, if you guys have had that experience, I would love to hear about it down in the comments section below. Be Make for a very interesting discussion. And then remediation plan, this is what they're calling an optional thing, right? So... Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper into each of these things. So I kind of jumped the gun on here. The ConOps is the one I was saying was like that high-level document that was meant to be understood by non-technical people as well, right? So it might cover like a TTP, things like that. 
Uh, and what's pretty cool is they have, is it in this section? Maybe it's in the next section where you can see uh, like an example of this. Maybe it's not going to show up because I already finished the exercise. No, here we go. So if we jump to the resource plan, we can see if like we view this. This is like an example resource plan. So um, this is like an example of that, right? So you might have like the execution dates or the target dates and stuff like that. This is always defined very early on, basically before you begin the red team engagement. You will have a plan of, you know, if you're going to get initial access or you're not going to start from an assumed breach scenario and you need to get initial access, you're going to define like some dates where you're going to be doing this stuff and then post-exploitation and persistence and all that stuff, as you see here. Uh, pretty straightforward. Also, if you can have some funding for like AWS cloud stuff, pretty neat. You could define that down here as well within the, uh, the resource plan. And then for the operations plan, let's take a look at the sample that they had here. Um, this one is where you would cover, hey, what would cause us to halt the uh, engagement or even stop the engagement? Uh, how, we're, how are we going to communicate? And um, also some planned attacks and different things like what are we going to use for the initial access, for our phishing campaigns and, and stuff like that. And for our C2 infrastructure, of course, and then for the mission plan, like I said, this is the internal, just for the, the red team cell uh, themselves. So here's where you might have different stuff like this, like specific targets. And it can even get as granular as they were saying down to specific commands and times to execute different things. But here is a little example of a mission plan here, as you can see. Very much open for interpretation. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the um, the red team engagements, all the kind of pre-engagement stuff, I guess you would say, the, the big like uh, overview, high-level overview of what goes into a red team engagement. As you can see, there's a lot here. And when we get back into this series, the next thing that we're going to be covering is actually red team threat intelligence, which should be pretty interesting to see how can we apply threat intelligence to red team engagements and adversary emulation. So yeah, definitely stay tuned on the channel for that video. And if you want to get into some technical content in the meantime, you can do that right now. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.